Hello, welcome to another tea time with Uga. Today's tea is the same as last time, which is the breathe tea from Yogi. And the quote is, we should be strong and true. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about my investments, how I invest, what I consider worth investing in. Now, before we go into the detail of this, I mean, obviously, this is a tea with Uga, so it will be a 10 minute or 15 minute video. But I wanted to make it clear that this is not investment advice. I'm not one of those people who will tell you follow these five things and you will succeed or anything like that. What I wanted to do in this video is effectively walk you through my experience and the horror stories and everything, and also how I think about investing. So, for background, I. I started uh, working straight out of college and then I did not have uh, a separate source of income. So my income is effectively what I earned from working. Uh, I, I, I never actually uh, had any bonds or any things like that. Up to by the time I left Morocco, I had that source of income and so I did accumulate a bit of cash but I was not able to do much with it because I moved to Brussels and when I moved abroad uh, the Moroccan dirham is not a currency that you can easily transfer elsewhere and you have limitations uh, because of currency control. Which meant that when I went to Brussels I effectively started from scratch. Uh, uh, whatever cash I had was actually immediately consumed in um, living expenses and uh, so I didn't really invest because I didn't have money to invest. By the time I left Belgium after two and a half years, I did have a bit of money set aside, but that was effectively just cash. So it was cash sitting in my bank account. I did not buy anything expensive in that period. Uh, all my expenses were related to travel, a bit of medical and uh, living expenses. Once I moved to the UK, I realized that the cost of living was extremely expensive. I live in a nice area in central London. Everything is very expensive. So whatever I made in, the, in Brussels is not comparable to here simply because a lot goes to just uh, maintaining the living standard that I, that I have. So one of the more important aspects of how I think about money is that for me where I live is very important. So. I chose to live where I live, I chose the standing and the quality of where I live because that's something that personally is very, very important. I know that there are other people who would live in zone 4 or zone 3 and are completely happy with their choice. Uh, I also know that there are a lot of people who live with housemates, so they usually split the rent uh, uh, in 2 or 3. Uh, although my sister lives in the city, I made the choice that I wanted to live by myself even if it means that I pay more and I wanted to live in zone 1 in, in central London even though it means paying more and I wanted a certain quality in my flat which meant I pay even more. So all throughout this video what you'll notice is that it's all about choices. There is no stupid or smart. So you're not being stupid by living far, but you're also not being stupid by living in a place that 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 um, works for you. It's just about knowing what are the dimensions that matter, and that's where you invest. The dimensions that matter less, you don't invest in that. So that's the first thing. My objective over time is actually to get to a point where my rent is 33% of my income. That's something I managed to achieve when I was in Brussels. I am still not there uh, with that for the UK simply because of how expensive things are. I have stayed in this flat and the rent in this flat has not changed. Let me just move you a little bit. And that's something that means that if I were to get just a little bit more money, uh, whatever income I have would help actually dilute the percentage that my rent represents in my in my uh, uh, income. So that's the first thing. Second uh, um, area of investment is also something that is important for my well-being. So as much as I said where I live matters, my health matters a lot. The reason I thought about it was that 
because I don't come from money, because I don't have, I have not inherited anything, um, my ability to generate money is really linked to my energy level and to my intellect. And so um, what I invest in second to my place is actually anything that helps me get my energy and actually sustain my ability to be able to work for a few more years. Now, in the past that meant uh, doing things that uh, uh, helped my mental health. So for example, I would go and uh, get my uh, facial uh, with Natalia. A lot of people think that a facial is not something that is necessary. But for me, uh, that is something that effectively outside of that facial I had no human touch so the fact of having somebody who actually massages my face she would sometimes use acupuncture she would check my stress levels etc was the one thing I could do for myself every few weeks over lockdown uh, my dentist was the only person who touched me so I just feel that this is something that is very important for me because it signals to me that I'm taking care of myself and it helps my mental health because I have suffered from acne for a good over 20 years, probably 25 years or so, every possible type of acne. So for me, having good skin is something that just, if I have good skin, I just feel really amazing and that's really important to know what are the things that re typically trigger you. So if I were to have bad skin, uh, everything would go down here for me just because of my history uh, of, uh, of um, low self-esteem with my skin. The rest is actually a bit more serious for me and these are my musculoskeletal issues. So um, what I do is that I understand that these are things that take time and these are things that are complicated and you have to go through a lot of se a big series of tests and seeing different doctors etc. Now I live in the United Kingdom, so here we have Universal Health, uh, it's called NHS, so it's the Na National Health Service, and everybody actually can access it. I have made the choice to not use it because when I, have, when I, when I uh, saw all my friends' testimonials and when I have been looking into it, etc., the, the service is there, which is great but the waiting times can be very long. So to get a first appointment, it can be months. To get a second appointment, similar, same thing. A lot of the treatments are not the, the, the best. And without overgeneralizing, um, a lot of people who work in the NHS work very limited hours for X, Y, Z reason. So I have friends who needed to go to the um, uh, emergency care and because they have a rule that you shouldn't wait more than four hours because they have some metrics, instead of treating my friend, they just kept moving him every four hours from one spot to another spot and filling a new form so that he would not look like he stayed there for four hours, for over four hours. So he just ended up being there for ages. Same thing happened to his brother, also ended up in the emergency room for... Um, the whole night until his father came and you know um, so a lot of these things uh, I've been really doing my research and I've seen how there is so much pressure because of the inefficiencies despite all the money that goes in there so while I do pay my taxes I pay my national insurance I pay a surtax because um, uh, all the foreigners who come in uh, um, have to pay something called NHS surcharge which is a few hundred pounds a year assuming that, that you will be using NHS. Uh, I also have donated to the NHS uh, at the height of the pandemic before I actually had a look at their budget, which I should have probably done before. But um, the implication for that is that my going private for all my treatments means that I have to budget this. The, like It's a very big space between free and private. I. I did not find the middle space. I actually, because I do my due diligence, I, I go and I try to find doctors. It takes me weeks to research them, look at their accreditations. I check if there are any uh, uh, any litigation, any lawsuits pending, any malpractice. Like I go through it. So by the time I vet a doctor, it takes me time, but I'm, I'm, I'm more reassured. However, the prices are very, very expensive, which means for everything that I do, I really have to, I really have to budget. 
and so I have a, a health budget every month. I'm not going to share exactly what it is because I think this um, this is this really depends on what your 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 situation is, right? If you're healthy, if you're not. Um, but I have a set budget and I just keep accumulating it and as soon as I can afford something I do it so that's what I did for my left foot surgery and then my right foot surgery uh, um, I did quite a lot of physio um, I'm currently doing um, just about to start a course of injections for um, uh, my joints now I do have private insurance but actually the insurance doesn't cover most of the of the things. Uh, I think it's almost an art for insurers to tell you things are not covered. So, for example, when it comes to injections, I need to have injections on my right hip, on both my knees, and on my ankle. Um, but they say it's not. They they don't support that. Um, so I kind of have to. To, to find uh, to look around and find several clinics and see I'm trying to compare prices but without actually compromising the quality like I don't want to go somewhere and then end up with malpractice so you know it's these kind of things when you're like okay so I have five areas where I need injections I don't know how many injections I'm going to need I have to do the research so I invest my time first and then I invest my uh, money my hard-earned money um, and I feel that while at this point I'm, I'm really in the midst of it, I feel like in two or so years, when all of this is behind me, it would have been really a worthwhile investment. It's the same thing as for my eye surgery, where I obviously, uh, uh, I saved for that and I did it, but it's been now close to three years and I'm so happy because I don't even have to think about my eyeglasses or whatever anymore and it's just something that is completely behind me and I don't even you know have to think about it so I'm hoping that with my musculoskeletal issues eventually I will get to that point I only started that journey two years ago um, I, I reckon I still have at least a year or a year and a half to go and then I should be fine um, so that's something where I said you know um, I'd rather not buy something nice but instead actually invest in my health so for me anything that impacts mental health physical health etc I need that because I want to continue being able to generate money then uh, the remaining two two types of, of investments are investments to upgrade my lifestyle and investments to eventually be able to get money at some point the investment to be able to get money at some point I had uh, tried to to buy I bought actually shares in a company so when I had just moved to the UK uh, I was looking around and I wanted to do something good for the environment so I invested uh, um, most of my savings actually uh, in a green company uh, and then the, that company went bust so I lost all my savings and this is something that you have to take into account um, in that um, when you invest capital, you have to know when the, when there is capital at risk. You have to know uh, that that uh, you might not get the results that you were hoping for, etc., etc. I took that risk. It was my first time actually taking a risk, and I learned the lesson from it because I learned what is my risk tolerance, and I realized it's quite low. Um, so while I have lost the money, I'm not going to dwell over it because uh, I have lear learned a lot from that experience. Uh, list of each is actually diligence in the management team of, of companies before I invest and things like that so for now I'm not investing in any companies I had many offers like people saying oh you if you want to become part of the investors if you want to buy bonds and we're fundraising all these kind of things um, and I just decided I don't want to do it even if I have the ability to do my due diligence I just I'm not psychologically ready for that so that's the route I don't go down so I don't do bonds or anything like that or invest in companies uh, crypto all my friends uh, are invested in cryptocurrencies they're very excited about it I just made the choice that I don't want to invest in something for fear of missing out so again I know that some people are very quick to throw the word stupid around and I have learned to not do that so um, 
I don't accept when people say, oh my God, it's so stupid to not be in crypto or NFT, etc., etc. If you're so excited about it, then keep doing it. I'm happy for you. I'm truly, truly happy for you. Don't go around calling people stupid. So um, I, despite, despite uh, uh, being called names, etc., I decided that I, I, I don't... I don't want to invest in something that I don't believe in. So even though the company I invested in went bust, at least I believed in that it was doing something good, not just giving me money, right? I don't want I don't want money for the sake of having money. Uh, I want to make money while making a difference, which is why I like my work. Um, I work very hard. But I actually know I make a difference, and that's that's something you know. It, it it's it's different. Like um, uh, I I tell some of my mentees that it's okay to make money for other purposes. It's just that my purpose is a bit different. Um, what else is out there? I once invested in a a little gold coin because I remember telling my friend how how about my um, the investment that I lost. And, uh, and he said, you know, you should invest in gold because it never goes down. So for the fun of it, I actually bought a coin because it reminds me of uh, a cartoon that I used to, 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 to read as a child. Um, I think it's called uh, duck, Scrooge, Uncle Scrooge. It's a duck. Um, in French, it was called uh, Uncle Picsou. So I just thought I will have one. Obviously, I don't have a million of them, but I just bought one. See, and that was one thing that actually, technically, you could go and walk to a bank and sell, sell them the gold coin if you needed that. But it was just a fun thing for me to have my little gold coin. It was just symbolic. Uh, I don't plan on selling it, plus it's not worth much. Um, what else? Uh, so we talked about we talked about investing in my place, my health, my mental health the company that went bust, no crypto, gold. Um, with my bank, I, um, I invest in something that is a mixed portfolio. Um, in the UK, every year you can, I think you have something like, you can invest up to 20,000 pounds per year where you don't pay taxes and it's called an ISA. Um, don't quote me on this, uh, you need to do your research. Uh, so I, as I said, I'm not giving financial ex uh, advice, just my experience. And so what I did is that I actually, every year, I will put some of money in that. I know that it's a capital at risk, so I know that the stocks go up and down and the value of the thing goes up and down. But what I do is I put an amount that obviously is under the 20K per year, but you could put more. And then every few weeks, I will see if, if, the, val <clears throat> if the value of my portfolio went very high compared to how much I have put. I will extract a little bit. If it went below, which is completely normal, that happens, I don't touch it. But I don't do that like every day. It would be every three or four months. Um, then I have a bit of cash, not liquid, obviously, in my bank account. And what I have started to do recently is actually invest in jewelry. Investing in jewelry is something that ticks a lot of boxes. So first of all, it makes me feel really good. I absolutely love the feel of gold on my on my hands. and. Um, a lot of these things have a story, so like this little panther is called Phoebus and I have a very detailed story of why it's called this and every time I look at him, I know it makes me feel invincible. Um, I have been researching jewelry, I have been looking at things that will be at the sweet spot of being something that has value but also something that makes me happy and that matches the aesthetic that I want. So I did not go and invest in something like a Rolex Submariner. I think it's, it's called a Submariner, whatever. Those watches that everybody around me is trying to buy just for the sake of reselling it. Instead, I went to things that every morning when I wear my jewelry, I love it. I have a wish list of things that I'm going to buy and it will be in my next tea time with Uga. Uh, but you know every piece like I really really cherish every piece I have started building my wish list and these are items that if someday I ended up being stuck I'd probably end up selling one or two 
but I just like it. I just like the idea of having these items and making the most out of them. And then eventually they'd have my back because they wouldn't depreciate uh, too much afterwards. Um, so that's jewelry and I'm starting to get into watches and there is a watch that I absolutely love. It's actually not one of those watches that appreciate in the aftermarket. So it's not like the Rolex and Patek, etc, etc. But you will see that in my wish list. Um, if I get it in a few months, uh, it will be a very nice addition to the one that I have currently. Um, and then the last bit of investment that I'm doing is actually in education. And not education in the sense of doing online classes and all that, but it's effectively I have reached a stage where I am very senior, uh, where I am uh, uh, I'm getting my own clients. I get to like um, two week two two weeks ago, for the first time I actually signed a proposal letter. Normally it's in my line of work and in consulting. It's you only do that at partner level. But the partner I work with is, is, is really gracious and he said, this is your client, so I want you to also sign the letter. And that was a very big moment for me. And so I am upgrading a lot of things around that in the sense that my wardrobe is going towards that, my lifestyle is going towards that, but also um, I am I'm reading books. They should not be business books, it should be anything because you need to be able to talk to somebody at a dinner table without having to talk about work. So I have, I'm past the stage of reading business books. I just read about anything. Um, something I recently read was about um, a commentary on institutionalism uh, in the US. Um, I have been looking at things around um, uh, the fall of the USSR. Today I was watching part of a documentary about the money of the Nazis, how they actually, how did they find money to fund all that war when they were not supposed to, to, to have an army. Um, I'm looking at random documentaries because right now it's easier for me than to read. Uh, but it doesn't matter what the topic is. The other day I watched a five minute documentary on Japanese knives. But I just want to start getting back into the um, well-rounded person that I've always been, but that kind of lost when I was so busy with, with work. So now I'm just reintroducing that balance because being that uh, a very balanced person who's got a life is something that is very important. And so I will also be investing in hobbies but that is going to be in a few weeks from now. So the things I plan to invest in would be, uh, again, uh, uh, recover my, my, my fitness level. You know, having all the injuries and the surgeries and all that, I kind of stopped doing a lot of things. So it's, it goes to the health, but it also goes to, you know, just being out there and being, you know, doing some, some, some nice pursuits. I'm also going to, at some point, possibly sponsor a museum, I need to choose which one because obviously it's not going to be one where they took artifacts from some countries. Um, so it will have to be a museum where I'm very happy about the provenance of things, but you know, where I feel that I contribute to people learning um, about things. So I, I'm still making my selection. Um, I'm also investing in charity work. I'm not going to comment further than this, but it's just something that I've done a lot of, um, let's say, extra professional work all my life. And I, I did have, I think, a period of about a year or so where I kind of re <clears throat> reduced that because I was under so much uh, pressure. You guys probably followed that. Um, but over the past few months, I just started again doing all my volunteer work and um, you know, uh, continuing the things that I've been doing since I was uh, in college. So that kind of helped me regain some of my personality because these these things were part of who I am. And uh, while I don't necessarily talk about it much, I just feel that just the knowledge that this is something that I do is, is it really makes me happy. And obviously I have my channel. Um, there was a time where I was thinking, why am I even doing this channel? And I realized that it's actually a good thing because 
I am a very introspective person and by talking through my thought process it helps me think. So by doing these videos I'm also clearing ideas in my head and I also am putting the word out there because I, I, I love seeing that. I love seeing um, how I'm progressing and how I'm evolving in life. And even just, you know, my little flat. You've, you've, you've seen this uh, me in my flat for over three years now and it keeps evolving little by little. And so next week I'm going to post a video of my massive, massive, massive uh, haul for January. It's, it's the biggest I've ever done because I've been buying things. And it's small little things that are going towards that whole upgrading my lifestyle, making my life easier, looking after my health, uh, just feeling a bit more grown up, more senior, more put together. So I'm really looking forward to what is coming my way and um, yeah, exciting times, exciting times. So as you can see, I don't really have uh, and a worksheet with like an excel table with what I'm going to invest in etc it's really about convictions and it's really about making the space for it so uh, at this point it's about making sure that I invest in something that will accrue value in the future this happens to be my well-being and my ability to generate money in two years down the road I think it will be completely different because Hopefully, inshallah, I would have fixed a lot of the things that I've been struggling with. And um, I'm not complaining, because I know that there are a lot of people who have worse diagnosis, etc. But um, it is it is quite daunting, because um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into the details of the medical stuff, but it's just, it's a, um, um, a degenerative thing. It's, it's not arthritic, but it's just, a, it's good that I caught it now and that I'm able to actually act on it and stop things and effect changes in my life because if I had just carried on I would have lost a lot of my mobility and that thought is something that puts things back into perspective it's not a near-death experience not nothing like that but just the thinking that maybe if I had waited a few more months I wouldn't have been able to walk properly on my right side is something that makes you think um, so I'm glad I, I've been investing in that it's very difficult. There are times where I'm thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And then I say, no, I'd rather not. Uh, so I'm trying to have that balance of making myself happy uh, and at the same time investing in my future. So it's a very, it's a very delicate uh, thing of being present and at the same time looking forward to the future. That is it for today. Relatively long video. I think it's going to be around the 20 minutes. So sorry about that uh, next video is going to be my massive haul and the following one is going to be my beautiful investment wish list it, it will be worth the watch because i have a few gems in there um i do have a bit of an eclectic test taste so you might not it's not the most fashionable thing but i love every item i'm going to start writing it down in the next couple of days just to make sure that i download the pictures and i can put them in the videos because i don't know if you noticed i started trying to put pictures because i feel that it prevents me from just talking at you and you having to google stuff to see what it looks like so yeah uh, let me know if you have learned anything about the dimensions that matter the most for you to invest in. Um, I'd love to have a conversation going in the comments because I am fully aware that this is not the traditional investment kind of video some people would have expected. But it's more personal and I think it's good to tailor it to yourself. Alright, I'll go now and I'll see you soon on my channel. Take care.